Hello, everybody. I welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I promised earlier that I'm going to be online to share a bad news. This is a period of Christmas, and somebody may be wondering and asking, how can somebody wants to, uh, somebody during the Christmas season when everybody is celebrating, and then somebody is talking about bad bad news yes it is a bad news the bad news is that i have seen i've looked around and i have resolved never never to make anybody feel good about what is really bad this is a message to christians and i want all Christians to hear this message. If you are online, please share this video, this live video. I want as many as possible to join us to listen this evening. Everybody is celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And we know that not everybody actually is celebrating. Now, the bad news I have for as many that are living their lives as if they are enemies of Christ, is that your pastor won't be the judge of the world. Your pastor will never, never be the judge. We have only one judge, and that judge is Jesus Christ. Listen, the same one that died for us is the same one that is going to judge the world. He came at first and died. Secondly, he is going to return. And when he comes, he is not coming to die again, but he is coming to take his people home. And for as many who live their lives as if there is no judgment, I tell you, it is going to be a very terrible day. And this is a bad news. The bad news is that a lot of people have been deceived as if their pastors are the one that are going to judge them on the last day. Hardly I see people say that this is what the Bible says, this is what the scripture says. What I hear many people say awful times is that this is what my pastor says, my geo says, this is what my general overseer says. There has been a lot of confusion, so much confusion today. A lot of Christians have been deceived. We have a lot of people who can't quote a single scripture from the Bible. But all they do is that they have various quotations of their men of God, of their pastors in their head. People no longer fear God. Even when God says, do not steal, people want to steal in order to please their pastors. People want to steal. People want to deliberately disobey God. People, a lot of people don't want to obey God but they want to obey their pastors. I tell you the truth that it is going to be very, very terrible. Uh, the Bible makes us to understand in the book of Ephesians, I want to read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5 following. For this ye know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. For because of these things, the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no pastor deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, Come at the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. If Jesus came and died for us, if Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for us, and asked us never, never to go back to our lives of sin that he has delivered us from, and then somebody is coming in the name of being a man of God to tell you that Jesus has destroyed sin. That it doesn't matter how you live your life, that Jesus has died, and that his grace covers your sin. It is a lie from the pit of hell. God said 
that the foundation of God standeth sure, and that the Lord knows those who are His. Let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from evil. Today we have a lot of people who call the name of Christ but refuse to depart from evil. The bad news for you is that the men of God that are deceiving you today are not going to be the one that will judge you. Jesus Christ is the one that is going to sit in a judgment seat and judge you even the things that your pastor do not see, the things that other people do not see. He is going to reveal all of them. They are going to be revealed on the last day. And I tell you the truth that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is not going to be a good news for a lot of people. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 makes it very clear that when Jesus is going to return, a lot of people are going to mourn. Revelation 1 7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Why are they going to wail because of him? A lot of Christians are going to wail because they never prepared for the return of Christ. Because a lot of them have been deceived. But I tell you the truth, you still have the time to make things right. This is a bad news, but you can make it a good news. I've never seen any man of God saying, I have a bad news for you. But this is what the Lord laid in my heart. It is better for me to tell you the bitter truth now that you are alive and get you offended than pamper you and praise you when I see you. Oh, thank you for watching. I tell you the truth that the Lord is coming with anger. There's a lot of faith in the world. We have about 7 billion humans on earth. And we have one third of one's world's populations are Christians. But we don't see them living the life that we profess to live. Today everybody is celebrating Christmas. People are committing evil. Even ladies are losing their virginity. Boys losing their virginity and drinking and living useless life. In the name of celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But I tell you, if you can celebrate the birth of Jesus year after year, but if Jesus is not born in your life, if you are not born again, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your life as your personal Lord and Savior, you will burn in hell. It was about a few days ago, the Lord revealed something to me, and it is burning in my heart. What did the Lord tell me? The Lord told me that He's coming. I had a revelation. I saw it very, very clear. It was very, very clear. This is what the Lord revealed to me. And while I was in this revelation, I saw a young man. He was a bridegroom getting ready to go and go to the church. And people were waiting for him outside. People were, uh, were waiting for him. People were attending to him. So I saw him. I, I saw the people waiting just for him to come out so that they could go to the church and carry go ahead with the wedding. So the Lord spoke to me and told me that my son, I am ready to come. I'm just waiting for the father. Just as everybody is waiting for the bridegroom to come and go to the church for the wedding, that is how I am now ready to come. And the Lord told me that Satan is ready for the second coming of Jesus for the rapture. And that everybody is ready, but the church is not ready. The church is not ready at all for Jesus Christ to come and take them home. This is a problem. And God told me that Satan is happy for the rapture to take place now. That he needs the rapture now because if the rapture takes place, it is going to open another page of oppression for him. He will now have a full flesh over the affairs of the world to control the world and there will be a revolution the 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 tribulation will then begin officially but nobody talks about these things i tell you that i have a bad news for you if you are the type that live your life the way you want the bad news is that those who preach grace to you grace as a license to continue in sin and never remember the word of god in romans 6 that Shall we continue in saying that grace may abound? No, God forbid. If they do not tell you that the grace of God that bringeth salvation to all men, 
uh, bring out salvation has appeared to one man that it teaches us to deny ungodliness and what they love. If they never teach you this, but they teach you that the grace of God covers your sin, that the love of God is so great and that you can live your life the way you want. It doesn't matter. You can come to church naked or half naked. Anything you like you can do, provided just cover, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus and confess your sins and that Jesus is going to forgive you. I tell you, you are lost and you will go to hell. The bad news for you is that you are going to hell. You want to repent today because Jesus is angry with this world. If you do not hear this message and live by the principles of the Bible, but only confess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, but He is not Lord over your will, He's not Lord over your actions, He's not Lord over your thoughts, He's not Lord over the things you do, I tell you the truth, you will rot in hell. How many of us are Christians watching right now? How many of us are Christians? Are you living the life of Christianity? It is going to be very, very hot. I tell you the truth. I have seen the judgment of God. October, I had an accident and I became unconscious. I can't say I, I, I died. I can't say that. But I was unconscious for hours. And while I was unconscious, I had the judgment of God. I was sentenced to hell. I never made it. The judgment was terrible. I never made it. But God gave me a second chance. How many of us have second chance today? God told me, you are condemned. I was condemned. It's not because I was not a Christian, but because I rebelled against the laws of God. He has given me another chance, and I have to make good use of this chance. How many of us are alive today? Do you know that God has given you another chance to live well so that you can attain eternal life? I tell you the truth that some of you watching right now, and those of you are going to watch on YouTube, you are alive not because it is your plan to actually be alive. Not because it is a plan of the enemies that you should be alive. But I tell you, it is because maybe, probably, you would have been dead and gone to hell. But the Lord is giving you time and time and time again. So that you can make your ways right. Call yourself to order. It offends me when I see men of God. Claim the pupit, go over the radio, over the cable, over YouTube and on Facebook and say God is not going to judge Christians. It is a lie from the pit of hell. Please repent of your sins. Jesus Christ is coming back again. The same way we saw him come. The same way he is going to return. He was born as a child. He came as a child the first time. But when he's going to come back, he's not going to come back like a savior. He's going to come back like the lion of the tribe of Judah. He came as a lamb of God and he was slaughtered for our sins. He's not going to come back to atone for our sins again. All things that we need for life and godliness have been provided by Jesus Christ. And if we take the grace of God in vain and continue in our sins, it is going to be very, very terrible. Now let me give you another part of the bad news. Do you know that hell has no duration that just the way god lives out of time he does not live in our normal time god lives in eternity that is how hell is going to be hell is eternal death in outside the presence of god it is going to be very very terrible today you can put on anything you want to church you can live your life the way you want but that is not the truth we have been deceived over the years you need to call yourself to order. The Bible says, come out of her, my people. Which church are you attending? Who is your pastor? If your pastor can see the money in your pocket and see all the denominations, but can never see the condom in your pocket, he can tell you every all the good things in your life and tell you the good future that you have and tell you about the promises, good promises of God about your life and shower you with prayers and decree uh, prophetic uh, prayers upon you, but can never see the bad things you do. Can never tell you that you are a womanizer. He does not tell you that you are a shit. He does not tell you that God is angry with you because of your life of sin. That you are an alcoholic. He does not see all those things. All he sees about you is how God has good plans for you. I tell you, you are lost. You are lost and you need to change your church. I have no church of my own. I'm not telling you to come and join my denomination. Please, Call yourself to order. I want to do my best while I live in this world. 
So that when I leave this world by God's grace and rest eternally in the bosom of the Lord, I can live it with joy and rejoice eternally. I don't want to regret because of the work I left undone. While I live and while all true Christians live, we should wake up and speak the truth. I said it and I'm going to say it again. It is better to live for the truth. It is better to die for the truth than live for a lie. A lot of us are living the life of hypocrisy and lies. How many of us are really, really ready for the rapture today? If Jesus decides to come back right now, if a father says, Son, pick up yourself, go and bring my children. How many of us are ready to rapture with him? Do we know that the whole world is ready? The systems of the world have prepared the whole world ready for the oppression of the Antichrist. Today, they, our money is tied to the bank account and to your security number. Even in Nigeria, in the US, in UK, everywhere, there is a system that is synchronizing everything. How many of us even know that Facebook recognizes your face? Just try and upload a picture. Facebook is going to suggest to you who the person is. I uploaded a picture of ministers one day and the suggestion of Facebook to me of their faces asking me to tag them was 95% correct. Facebook dictates your face. You will never, never escape from the devil. You can never, never escape from the one that is going to, that the Antichrist that is coming. You will be detected. Please wake up now. Church, wake up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. I want to thank you for watching. And I just want to inform you that I have a YouTube channel. The Lord has revealed some things to me that will help your Christian life. Hosanna E. E. David. Or you can go to my main YouTube channel, Ego Eye Opener, or my website, EgoEyeOpener.com. I'm also, I've also uh, launched another website, Biblical Sexual Purity. There's a lot of rot in our society. Even the church, nobody talks about the sexual immorality in our time. I have to, as a command from the Lord, w, just go to www.biblicalsexualpurity.com. There are some things that the Lord has revealed to me. Satan has made the world to become drunk with sexual immorality. We have to wake up and shake off every shame from our bodies and live the true life of the kingdom. It is not by our confession, it is by our deeds. If you are a Christian and you don't live the life of Christianity, you are a son of hypocrisy. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Remain rapturable. Merry Christmas to you all. God bless you. Bye-bye.